Twilight Gets a Puppy by TDR Chapter 11 Dog Eat Dog Part 2 Sparkle Residence Two years remaining until the thousandth year. Okay Twilight calm down, there's no need to panic, Twilight muttered to herself sitting in front of her dresser looking in the mirror as she brushed her mane. What am I talking about? There's plenty of need to panic. Twilight yelped, several strands of her mane curling up as her eyes went wild. After a moment of heavy breathing she calmed down again smoothing the errant hair back down with her brush. Okay, no, calm calm. I have read every book on dating and the majority of them say there is nothing going to happen on the first date and nothing will ever happen unless I let it. She exhaled softly. We are just going to a play and then to dinner. Nothing fancy. But what if? The strands of hair pop back up as the mare started pacing in front of her mirror. I don't know anything about him. Anything could happen. Shush I know everything about him. Twilight snapped at herself smoothing down her hair and sitting down again. Prince William Blueblood, blood type Q, height 127 cm, age 18, 19 in 2 months and 3 days. Youngest child of the Blue Blood family, only male child. Indirect relative to Princess Celestia herself, descended from Princess Platinum. Formal education at Canterlot U, currently working towards a bachelor's in politics, history and international relations as well as a minoring in foreign policy, and international culinary studies. On the other side of the room Spike and Ross remain where they were, pressed against the wall watching the mare. The two say nothing as Twilight starts listing off Blue Blood's hobbies, musical taste, ear length, and hoof size. Once again the two are both quite happy that they are not genetically related to the Sparkle family. Having seen three freakouts in the span of two hours today. As bad as Shining and Twilight's were, they still couldn't compete with the meltdown Nightlight was having after hearing his daughter was going on a date. It was pretty clear by the way Twilight Velvet was dealing with him she was used to it but she had her hooves full with just her husband. All right, I'm in now too. Spike muttered to Ross. If only to see how far this train wreck will go. Grove. Ross agreed. What was that? Twilight snapped suddenly turning her head eyes wide at the sight of her brothers plastered against the wall near her door. Gah. How long have you two been there? Since about 15 minutes ago, when you let us in. Spike tried to placate. Just relax Twilight. It's just a date. Just a date? Just a date. Twilight shouted her hair coming undone again as Ross slapped his face with a paw. This could be the biggest social event of my life? What if he doesn't like me? What if I screw things up? He could be my future husband and I'm going into this blind. What if I screw everything up and wind up a lonely spinster surrounded by cats in my 80s? Cats spike. I don't even like cats. Bark. Ross stated licking his lips. You like cats? Spike asked. Roof Ross explained. They do. Spike questioned. Cats do not taste like chicken Ross. Twilight fussed. Woof. Yes as far as I know. Twilight retorted. Ugh, what am I gonna do? Rough. Yes I know Cadence said he was nervous about asking me out but... Woof. Do you really think he's freaking out about this too? Ross shrugged. Seriously Twilight. Just go and have fun. Spike rolled his eyes. Fun. Twilight snapped, her hair standing up again. Reading is fun. Making spreadsheets is fun, this is nerve-wracking. This is panic-inducing, this is... Ow! Twilight winced as Ross quickly walked over and cuffed her on the back of the head with a paw before leaning over her staring down intently and forcing the mare to take a step back. She blinked after a moment before frowning and glaring back up at him. Do you have to do that every time? Twilight hissed. Rough. I was not freaking out. I was just nervous. Twilight snapped. Ross looked back at Spike who nodded. Yep that was definitely a freak out. 
Spike agreed. Twilight pouted. I still don't see why that means you have to hit me. Growling Ross retorted. Wait a book said slapping someone that was hysterical would snap them out of it. What book? Twilight demanded as Ross looked away sheepishly. Ross. Twilight glared. Woof. Ross admitted. The Wolf of the Harvest Moon. Twilight blinked then narrowed her eyes. That's one of Mom's romance novels, why are you reading that? Bark. What else did you think it could have been if Mom had it on one of her shelves? Twilight asked as Ross shrugged. That's a work of fiction you shouldn't take anything one of those says to heart. It's just creative storytelling. Bork Ross smirked watching Twilight blush, her ears flattening to her head. I did that once. I didn't know the chandelier wasn't connected to that rope. Twilight protested. So you you er, little Miss Daring don't, you nearly squished me with that banner you cut down. Spike snarked getting a laugh from Ross. Laugh it up fuzzball, the mass to weight ratio checked out in my notes, it's not my fault the chandelier wasn't clearly labeled. Twilight pouted a moment before smirking some. Probably better that I didn't cut that one. Imported crystal from a non-existent empire hitting the floor at that speed would have shattered all of it. Mistakes of my younger years. Rough. Ross grinned. That was longer than two months ago thank you very much. Twilight snorted as the other two chuckled, though even Twilight had a smile. Feeling better now? Spike asked. Yeah, despite my two idiot brothers' attempts to cheer me up. I do feel a little better. Twilight sighed. Woof. Ross pointed out. Right, I know I know. Don't stress it, try to enjoy myself and get to know him better first. The play is the first thing, so if we can't think of anything else to talk about over dinner we can fall back to that. I have been curious about this rendition of The Count of Monte Cristo. They turned the book into a musical, Twilight sighed. All right all right. I see the point, but if this all goes badly I will say I told you so. Geez don't jinx it. Spike snorted. Well at least you look ready. Maybe smooth down your mane a bit before you go, I mean you still have ten minutes before he's supposed to get here. Plenty of time. Ten minutes. I'm not ready. Twilight shrieked cutting Spike off and rushing around her room, digging through her dresser to try and find the dress she picked out, completely ignoring that it was on her bed until Ross pointed it out. Spike and Ross took the moment after their sister tried putting it on backwards to step out of the room shutting the door behind them. Rough. Ross asked looking down at Spike. Yep, operation first date is a go, let's go get shining. Spike chuckled. Author's note. Now that the setup is over, it's time to get this date underway. And a bit of music as tribute, music. End author's note. End chapter 11. Dog Eat Dog. Part 2.